Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell. I appreciate your support. All right, today we are going to look at the entire 2023 lineup of Yamaha motorbikes. Let's get going. So, Yamaha, I did not see any actual new models in the Yamaha lineup. I also didn't see any that they removed, as far as I could tell. The, so a couple of the bikes, looking through the website, show new on the, on the motorbike, but it really is a motorbike that they've already had they just added some new features or something like that i didn't see any indication that these were actually new models that were just coming out for 2023 so really nothing new to speak of also i know that this is old news but and we'll we'll touch base on this a little bit later but yamaha used to have a nice good variety of cruiser bikes uh, they used to have uh, the the star name they had road star and v star and uh, you know that kind of thing and um, and they used to have a nice variety of, of cruisers and now they they have two that would qualify as cruiser bikes they're actually in the sport heritage category as they list it um, but those are the only two they have. Neither of them are really any kind of a long distance cruiser or anything like that. So the only thing they have as a touring option is the sport touring bikes, which we, of course, will touch base and, and talk about later on. So not much in the way of cruisers, but which is kind of disappointing because Yamaha made good cruisers back in the day. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so when it comes to the competition bikes, the Hondas are red, the Kawasaki's are green, the Yamaha's are blue. So we're going to start well, not with competition, but with the scooters. We have the Zuma 125. It is, of course, a 125cc single cylinder automatic for 3800 and the X-Max uh 292cc for 6100 so that's all we're going to talk about scooters since that's not really the focus of this but just to let you know those are out there okay so uh yamaha does have a good selection of bikes and the prices seem pretty decent some of them seem a little overpriced some of them are seem really competitive uh so far honda seems to have the best pricing overall from what i've seen but uh, Yamaha is definitely a better competitor, I think, in terms of pricing than Kawasaki. Kawasaki definitely seemed to be a little bit overpriced, in my opinion. Just my opinion, though. All right, so anyway, enough of that. Let's start with the motocross bikes. We start with the youth. We have a YZ65, which is a 65cc two-stroke, six-speed, 29.7-inch seat height, 0.9-gallon tank, 134 pounds, $4,800. And then the YZ85 is 85cc, pretty much everything else the same. 33.1 inch seat height, 1.3 gallon tank, 161 pounds, 4,900. All right, so then we have a YZ85LW. So this is basically the same thing as the YZ85, except it has a large wheel on them for both wheels so it has additional two inch uh on both wheels i think it's 19 and 16 inch wheels instead of 17 and 14 if i remember correctly 34.8 inch seat height instead of 33.1 and a couple pounds heavier 5100 an extra 200 bucks for those larger wheels all right, moving on, we have the YZ125, again, still two-stroke, six-speed, 38.6-inch .6 seat height. I think that is the tallest seat height I've seen in any bike anywhere so far. 
1.8 gallon tank, 209 pounds, $7,000. You can get the Monster Energy Racing Edition for an extra 200 bucks. And basically, as far as I can tell, the only thing the Monster Energy Racing Edition gives you is a special paint color scheme. And that one is 7200 all right, the YZ250, 250cc, still two-stroke on this, five-speed now, 38.4-inch seat height, 1.8-gallon tank, 227 pounds, 7,900, and the Monster Energy version, 8,100. Again, 200 bucks more. And now we move to the YZ250F which is a 250cc. Now this one's a four stroke. So yeah, the YZ250 is a two stroke. The YZ250F is a four stroke. Uh, five speed, 38.2 inch seat height, 1.6 gallon tank, 234 pounds, 8,600 bucks. And the Monster Energy version is still 200 bucks more at 8,800. And then we do not have a YZ450 regular we just have the yz450f which is a 450 cc four stroke five speed 38 inch seat height 1.6 gallon tank 240 pounds 9900 bucks and again the monster energy is 200 bucks more at 10100 all right moving on to the cross country cross country bikes we have the yz125x x for cross country 125cc two-stroke, six-speed, 38.2-inch seat height, 1.8-gallon tank, 212 pounds, 7,100 bucks. And then the YZ250X, 250cc two-stroke, five-speed, 38.4-inch seat height, 1.8-gallon tank, 229 pounds, 8,000. The YZ250FX, which is adding that F in, gives you your four-stroke. Six speed on this 37.6 inch seat height, 2.2 gallon tank, 245 pounds, 8,900. So an extra 900 bucks for that four stroke and a little bit more gas capacity. All right, and then the YZ450 FX, the cross country four stroke, 450, 450 cylinder or 450 cc, four stroke, five speed, 37.6 inch seat height, 2.2 gallon tank, 254 pounds. 10,000 even. We then have two versions of the cross country that are a WR models that they list as being more of an enduro. So this is the WR 250F uh, enduro. This is a 250cc four stroke six speed. Well, I think it's a 250cc four stroke. So it's got the F on it and, and it's a 250. So I'm assuming it's a 250cc. I'm assuming it's a four stroke because it has the F. They don't actually tell you what size the engine is on this model. Whatever, I don't know, they missed that. They left it out for some, or something. Six speed, 37.6 inch seat height, 2.15 gallon tank. Bit of an odd number, but anyway, 254 pounds, 8,900 bucks. And then the WR 450F, 450 cc four stroke, five speed, 37.6 inch seat height, 2.15 gallon tank, 262 pounds, 10,000 even. Okay, so then we move to trail bikes. The trail bikes, they have a youth version for these as well. So we have the youth on the competition motocross, and then we have the youth on the trail. And this is what competes, like the, the motocross youth competes a little bit more with Kawasaki as far as pricing goes, and the trail bikes youth competes a little bit more with Honda. So we have the PW50, which is a 50cc two-stroke automatic 18.7 inch seat height 0.5 gallon tank it's kind of small 90 pounds 1700 bucks probably would still go with the Honda on that one just because of the smaller tank and uh, and it's a two-stroke I think if I remember correctly the Honda is a four-stroke anyway uh, then we have the TT 50e still 50 cc but this time it's a four stroke three speed instead of an automatic 21.9 inch seat height 
0.8 gallon tank, 128 pounds. That's a lot closer to the Honda uh, Youth one. And this one is 1750 versus Honda 1700. So again, the Honda seems to be slightly better deal, but only slightly. All right, so TT 110E, 110 cc, four stroke, four speed, 26.4 inch seat height, one gallon tank, 159 pounds, 2300 bucks. The 125, the TT 125 LE, 125cc four stroke. I'm guessing, I do not know, they do not tell me. Again, this is another bike that for some reason they missed telling us what engine it is. Five speed, 31.7 inch seat height, 1.6 gallon tank, 198 pounds, 3400 bucks. And the last of the trails, the TTR 230. 223cc, four stroke, six speed, 34.3 inch seat height, 2.1 gallon tank, 251 pounds, $4,500. All right, that's it for the trails. Then we have moved to the dual sports. We have the TW200, which is a 200cc, four stroke, five speed, 31.1 inch seat height, 1.8 gallon tank, 278 pounds, 4,900 bucks. And then the bigger brother, the XT250, 250cc four stroke, five speed, 32.7 inch seat height, 2.5 gallon tank, 291 pounds, 5,300. All right, moving on, we go to the, we're gonna go to the sport bikes now. Uh, where's the super sports? So we have the YZF R3. R3 is a 321cc, four-stroke, six-speed, 30.7-inch seat height, 3.7-gallon tank, 375 pounds, 5,500 bucks. Not bad for an entry level of a uh, sport bike for 5,500. That's pretty decent. Uh, and then you also have, again, another... Um, Another special paint job. We have the World GP 60th Anniversary Edition. All the same specs, just a different paint job. And same price, too, for that, which is pretty good to have that special paint job on a with the same price range. Hey, Harley and Indian, listen to that. You guys who jack up your prices really high when you want a different color paint. Anyway... Uh, YZF R7 is the next one up, 689cc, 4-stroke, 6-speed, 32.9-inch seat height, 3.4-gallon tank, 414 pounds, 9200 bucks. with, again, the World GP 60th edition. This one's 100 bucks more at 9300 instead of 9200 all right, so now we get into a little bit of the higher level ones. So we have the YZF R1. We started at an R3, went up to an R7, and now we're at an R1. Doesn't make sense to me, but who am I to, you know, whatever. The YZF R1 is a 998cc inline four cylinder, six speed, 33.7 inch seat height, 4.5 gallon tank, 448 pounds, $18,000 and the World GP 60th edition for 18,100. And then the YZF R1M racer bike 998cc in line 4, 6 speed, 33.9 inch seat height, 4.5 gallon tank, 450 pounds. There's some other special things on here uh, cuz you know the engine and and dimension sizes are pretty much the same between the R1 and the R1M. But there's some other things that make it uh, a better racer, and that is twenty-seven thousand. All right, we move on to the hyper nakeds. Hyper naked. We start off with the MT03, three hundred twenty-one cc, four-stroke, six-speed, thirty-point-seven inch seat height, three-point-seven gallon tank, three hundred seventy-three pounds, five thousand dollars. MT07. All they tell you is it's a four-stroke, six-speed. They don't tell you... They tell you it's dual overhead cams. So I'm assuming it's a parallel twin at this point with a 689cc, but they don't tell us that. 31.7-inch uh, seat height, 3.7-gallon tank, 406 pounds, 8,200. 
The MT-09, I've heard a lot of good things about. 890cc inline three cylinder. That's that's different. Six speed, 32.5 inch seat height, 3.7 gallon tank, 417 pounds, 9,800 bucks. And the MT-09 SP, which is a special, uh, has uh, different color schemes and uh, some other upgrades for 11,005 and an additional $1,700. All right, the MT-10, 998 cc, inline four, six speed, 32.9 inch seat height, 4.5 gallon tank, 467 pounds, 14,200. And then the MT-10 SP edition with, again, special colors and upgrades for a whopping $3,000 more at 17,200. All right, so we move on to the Sport Heritage. Those are the ones I was talking about. So we start off with the V-Star 250. The V-Star 250 is a 250cc V-Twin, 5-speed, 27-inch seat height, 2.5-gallon tank, 324 pounds, $4,700. This is the kind of bike you will see at the MSF training course or the Total Control training uh, systems these 250 cc cruisers are very popular okay the next one up and this is kind of the upgraded cruiser is the bolt r spec the bolt r spec which is a 942 cc v twin again five speed 27.2 inch seat height 3.4 gallon tank 542 pounds 8900 now, I'll be honest here, in my personal opinion, the Boltar spec is looking like it's a wannabe Harley Sportster for less money. Um, I've, I, I don't know if they've improved it over the years. I've had heard a lot of really mixed reviews on these things that, um, that they get shaky at higher speeds or, or whatever, that they feel like they're going to fall apart or something. So, uh, Anyway, that's that's just what I've seen or heard. That's you know, if if you have one and you love it, that's good. Um, I haven't ridden one. I don't really have a whole lot of desire to. Um, so that's just my personal opinion on them. It kind of feels like it's a a trying to compete with the Harley Sportster. And um, honestly, if I was going to get that style and shape of a bike, I would just pay the little bit extra money and buy the Harley Sportster. Anyway, uh, the other two Sport Heritage bikes. So we have an XSR 700. Looks to me like these are trying to compete with the Indian FTR based on the style and shape. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know. Anyway, uh... 689cc on the XSR 700 looks like an inline twin 6 speed 32.9 inch seat height 3.7 gallon tank 410 pounds 8900 bucks and then the big brother the XSR 900 890cc again an inline 3 cylinder 6 speed 31.9 inch seat height 3.7 gallon tank 425 pounds, 10,200. All right, we move to the Adventure Touring. Adventure Touring, we have the very popular Tenere 700, 689cc, four stroke, six speed, 34.4 inch seat height, 4.2 gallon tank, 452 pounds, 10,500. And the Super Tenere ES. 1200 cc inline twin still even though it's 1200 six speed 33.3 inch seat height adjustable to 34.3 inch seat height so there's a a one inch adjustable seat height there 6.1 gallon tank 584 pounds 16,300 and that's the two adventure touring bikes that they have available both of them quite popular from what i understand and difficult to find. All right, and last, uh, Yamaha doesn't have as near as big of a selection as some of the other bikes. Last, we have the sport touring bikes. We start with the Tracer 9 GT. 
with again the 890 cc inline three cylinder six speed 31.9 inch seat height adjustable to 32.5 so don't so only a 0.6 inch adjustment available on that seat height five gallon tank 485 pounds fifteen thousand dollars and then the fjr 1300 es 1300 cc inline four six speed 31.7 inch seat height adjustable to 32.5 so a 0.8 inch seat height adjustability a whopping 6.6 .6 gallon tank i think that's the biggest tank i've ever seen uh, 642 pounds and 18,300 on that puppy. So there you go. There's the entire lineup for 2023 for Yamaha. Uh, now, as far as which ones I would like to try out, me personally, I'd like to try one of their hyper nakeds, like the MT-09 or really any of them, I think would be fun. Uh, but you know, the MT-03 and MT-07 have the most, uh, appealing seat heights for me. Um, MT-07 would probably be the one I would go for, but I do want to try one of the inline three cylinders. Uh, so that would be the MT-09 or the XSR 900. I think I would like to try that one as well. Um, the XSR 900, which is an inline three, 31.9 inch seat height. Uh, I think that would be a fun bike to try. It looks like a lot of fun to ride. So those are kind of the ones that I would be most interested in. Um, I think it's cool having the adjustable seat height on the Sport Touring, the Tracer 9 and the FJR 1300. I think that's a cool idea. And the Super Tenere AES as well. Um, you know, I think that that helps for some of the shorter riders. So that's cool. But anyway, those are my thoughts. That's what's available out there. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think, what you'd like to ride, uh, what you think of the Yamaha lineup. I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.